Welcome to video two on the anatomy of oil spill response and exercises. The U.S. Department of Transportation's Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration has been working with government agencies, industry owners, and operators and the response community to design this two-part training video series. The information found in this program is the result of collaborative efforts to increase awareness on exercises and response. In this video, we will examine the details of an oil spill response exercise showing the roles and responsibilities to share best practices in oil spill preparedness. During my many years in the Coast Guard and with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, I responded to many incidents and participated in oil spill exercises. I have been honored to watch the community of federal, state, tribal, and industry responders work together to prepare and respond. I have seen the response system continue to evolve to ensure the appropriate cleanup of spills. Many of these responders are the same ones who collaborated on this project. When an oil spill is discovered, the response process is activated. A call is placed to the National Response Center and provides as much information as possible about the incident. In this example, the responsible party also makes other notifications to coordinate resources on scene as soon as possible. Their incident management team members and oil spill removal organizations are response ready and jump to action. The National Response Center notifies the agencies and organizations that have regulatory roles in oil spill response. Effective incident management requires the ability to quickly establish command and control. Organizations may bring specialized technical skills, equipment, and trained responders to an event. They need to understand their roles and responsibilities so they can work together in a coordinated effort. Federal and state regulations are the key to making sure an oil spill response goes smoothly by establishing plans, identifying capabilities, and conducting regularly scheduled exercises. The requirements to have oil spill response plans and conduct exercises provide the opportunity to work together prior to a real event and fine tune the response and coordination activities. From an outsider's perspective, this scene of an oil spill exercise may look like chaos, but it is actually an organized response structure with identified roles and responsibilities. It is important to understand these roles to improve response capabilities. The federal, state, local, tribal, and responsible party roles are designed to ensure everyone works together and contributes the needed resources. Exercises provide continuous feedback on ways to improve response plans and perform critical activities. When you first enter an exercise, you will likely be asked to check in. In many cases, there are also initial safety briefings. At the incident command post, you will see people in many different colored vests. Each of these colors has a specific meaning and plays an important role. It is important to understand the elements that are critical for a successful exercise or response to ensure that relevant stakeholders are supportive of strategies and tactics used. It is imperative to utilize the National Incident Management System along with a robust stakeholder engagement program. Key features include using a unified command to manage the response, a structured planning cycle, and the development of an incident action plan, often referred to as the IAP. This establishes a reporting hierarchy and keeps the response efforts scalable. The incident command system and the unified command construct is an organizational structure for an effective and efficient response to an oil spill. When a spill occurs, many public and private agencies become involved in the response and the key is to ensure that they are all working together. The unified command structure is scalable and brings together the responsible party and incident commanders from organizations that have jurisdictional authority to coordinate an effective response. Unified command is necessary to blend diverse agencies together into a cohesive response team that directs cleanup activities, disseminates information to the public and stakeholders, and complies with federal and state regulations. 
When there is a pipeline release, critical notifications are made to the pipeline's incident management team members and oil spill removal organizations. The incident management teams are rostered groups of incident command qualified personnel consisting of an incident commander and personnel qualified for other key incident command system positions. Incident management teams exist at local and national levels and have formal notification protocols, deployment, and operational procedures in place. These team members have specific qualifications to manage incidents or to accomplish supporting incident-related tasks or functions. The following are typical roles that make up an incident management team. The incident commander, or IC, is responsible for the overall management of the incident. During many incidents, a single IC carries out command activity, while other incidents may require that command activities and responsibilities are carried out by multiple ICs as part of the unified command construct. The finance section is responsible for all financial, administrative, and cost analysis aspects of the incident. The logistics section is responsible for providing facilities, services, people, and material in support of the incident. The logistics section chief also plays a key role in the development and implementation of the incident action plan. The operations section is responsible for the management of tactical operations directly in support of the primary mission of containment, cleanup, and restoration. The operations section chief is normally selected from the organization with the most jurisdictional or functional responsibility for the incident. The planning section develops a daily IAP. The planning section chief collects information on the evaluation, dissemination, and use of incident information and maintains the status of assigned and demobilized resources. The environmental unit is located within the planning section. A section chief leads each of these sections. In addition, there are others that advise the incident management team. A safety officer is assigned to develop and recommend measures to ensure personal safety and occupational health of the response workers and also the public and to anticipate, recognize, assess, and control hazardous and unsafe conditions or situations. The public information officer is responsible for developing and releasing information about the incident to the media and the public. In addition, many oil spill removal organizations provide oil spill response resources to support the incident management team and remove oil from the environment or mitigate associated impacts. Oil spill removal organizations include, but are not limited to, providers for source control, mechanical recovery, dispersants, bioremediation, in situ burning, or other regulated spill countermeasures. The federal and state partners arrive ready to help. In general, the Environmental Protection Agency for Inland and the Coast Guard for coastal areas are the pre-designated federal on-scene coordinators who monitor the response and ensure that federal resources are made available. Other federal agencies such as the Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, and the United States Fish and Wildlife Service can play a role in providing technical expertise and assistance to the cleanup efforts. In many cases, there are state and local environmental agencies that assist in ensuring the environmental cleanup is conducted per the state regulatory requirements. Depending on the scale of the event, a joint information center may be established that allows multiple agencies and the responsible party to work together on releasing information about the incident. Response resources utilize the plans and goals established to clean up the release and restore the environment. Every response is different and may require specific expertise as well as various types of resources. The framework established by the Incident Command System provides the flexibility to expand or contract as the needs of the response change. Knowing and exercising your response roles is key to success. 
oftentimes different branches wear colored vests for ease of identification. While there is no standard, typically the command staff wears white vest, finance wears green, logistics orange, operations red, and planning blue. One thing that you can look for during an exercise is the mingling of colors. This demonstrates information sharing amongst the branches. During exercises, you may also see exercise controllers and evaluators wearing other colored vests. During an exercise, it is important to observe the different meetings and communication amongst the team. The incident command system operational planning cycle is a systematic mechanism used to develop and disseminate an incident action plan for the next operational period. The schedule of deliverables, reports, and meetings that can be expected during an oil spill response or exercise is known as the planning P cycle. Phase one is the period of initial response and assessment and occurs at the start of all incidents. It involves notifications, assessment and incident briefings, and an incident management team meeting. The leg of the P includes the initial steps to gain awareness of the situation and establishes the organization for incident management. Although maintaining situational awareness is essential throughout the life cycle of the incident, the steps in this phase are done only once and then the incident management shifts into a cycle of planning and operations. The next phases are repeated for each operational period to reflect current conditions. Phase two is focused on developing incident objectives for the next operational period. This is where the incident command, or in large events, the unified command, meets with the command staff to discuss strategic objectives that will be identified in the incident action plan and used to direct cleanup activities. Phase three is focused on the tactics meeting and preparing for the planning meeting. The intent of these meetings is to develop and refine elements that will become the incident action plan. The goal of the tactics meeting is to gather operational input. The operations section chief will discuss how their organization will be postured to support cleanup and develop or revise the safety plan. During phase four, the planning section chief will then conduct a planning meeting that provides an overview of the tactical plan to achieve command's current direction, priorities, and objectives. The planning section chief or operations section chief will present the proposed plan and briefly discuss how the incident will be managed along with work assignments, resources, and support needed to implement the proposed plan. This meeting provides the opportunities for command and general staff to discuss and resolve any issues and concerns. Following the planning meeting, incident management team members complete any assigned task and or other products needed for inclusion in the incident action plan. Phase five is the final phase. It is the review and final approval of the incident action plan by the incident command or unified command. Copies of the plan are distributed during the operations briefing and to other incident team members. After phase five, the cycle begins again at phase two for the next operational period. Many exercises focus on completing all the phases at least one time. The planning P meetings, products, and coordination efforts are necessary to develop tactical objectives for cleanup and containment, outlining where boom will be placed, what techniques will be utilized, and what areas and wildlife will be protected. Depending on the severity of the event, select phases of the planning P may be applied as appropriate. Exercises to practice how all of these elements work together are important. These working relationships expand capabilities when responding to an actual oil spill. Coordination between federal, state, tribal, local, and industry responders during an oil spill is critical. To a novice or untrained observer, an oil spill exercise may seem chaotic, but the incident command system, unified command construct, 
integration of the responsible party and the planning cycle are all pillars that build a coordinated response. Creating plans and conducting exercises to practice these principles is an important element to success. By conducting these exercises, we identify areas of improvement so that when a real spill occurs, we are all response ready. We all work together to achieve a common goal to protect people and the environment.